All right, this is Jimmy Cab's tape to broadcast a 5150 interview series in Bulldozer Magazine here on a lovely Friday evening on the verge of the collapse of the United States of America with <laughs> Barney of Napalm Death. Welcome to the, the, the last of the freedom of the United States. Nice opening gambit. Yeah. Well, I don't think it's that quite that bad, yeah, but um, yeah, I know what you're saying. It, it's or maybe it is. Right? Maybe it is, yeah. It's incredible that we're here. Uh, let me backtrack. Almost 30 years, Napalm Death has been consistent, credible, real, genuine, and dedicated. 26 years you've been at the helm. My first question being that I'm an old man, and I was a fledgling young man when I first discovered you. How do you fucking do it? 26 years. Uh, I mean... I don't know, it's like anything, you know, you kind of look at it and try to break it down and microanalyze it, and I, I suppose I don't really have an answer for that, you know, it's just, I don't want to sound complacent or going through the motions, but to me it's like, I know what i got to do, you know, I know what I need to do with playing live, you know, it's got to be powerful and, you know, um, unformulaic as it can be, hopefully, you know, and just really the like savage attack you know um, obviously with the paradox being that the lyrics are exactly the opposite you know so um yeah it's it's a nice kind of interplay really and um y you know overall i just sort of yeah napalm they're such a part of me now and obviously the other guys as well in that um i don't know it's just, just you just kind of roll with it, you know. The reason why I asked this, though, is as I mentioned before, I mentioned key words that are, in my opinion, why the band has lasted so long and has stayed completely credible throughout the decades. One of the things that I admire is the fact that the band keeps growing and evolving, but yet stays with the foundation and the premise and the or organism, the, the organic yeah. honesty of the group. Yeah. Is that something that goes into the conscious level when you've been writing and recording? No, because I think that's something you... Uh, that's nice that you say that, but it's kind of not for me to say, really, you know. I mean, we can only do what we think is is the right thing to do at any given time. And I know that sounds like a simplistic kind of, like, response, but, but it really is that, you know. What makes things credible, we can't control that. You know, if people view us to be credible, then that's one thing. But for us to say, yeah, we've got to achieve credibility, think about it, that sounds really lame, you know what I mean? So, so it's like we only do what we think is the right thing to do. And, and yeah, sure, or, organic uh, 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 methods of doing things and spontaneity is very important. It's incredibly pivotal to napalm death you know so that probably helps you know our mindset when we approach things is let's make this as kind of as uh, um, unformulaic and as unpredictable as it, as, it, as it can possibly be hopefully what's, you know. it, what's interesting for me though is the fact within the demographics that you've been the uh, branching out towards sincerely let me break it down even further. Let me just make it simple. It's very interesting to me how the band not only has maintained a certain level of interest with the older fan base and especially with the newer fan base, but you've been branching out to different, you've been opening and playing with different other bands. For instance, recently you just went out with the Melvins, which is the same genre of music, but different genre and yeah. different audiences. Is it, how do you feel when you're playing to these completely different audiences, but yet they all fall under the napalm death umbrella. Yeah, it's a, it's a privileged position. It. It's a privileged position to be in. You know, I mean, like there's there's many bands that would would really probably like to be in that situation. But I mean, I think our thing is it, it, it's quite hard to talk about this actually without sounding arrogant. You know, because it's almost like you're kind of I don't know. Um, but we. Um, See, when, when we go into doing something, like making music or something like that, we don't think to ourselves, oh, it's got to be metal. It has, it's got to be, it's got to have these characteristics of being metal. Or, uh, similarly, uh, given our background, it has to be this much punk, you know what I mean? We don't even construct things in that way, you know? It's how can we make it the best thing that it can be possibly be? How can we make it so it doesn't conform to 
genre expectations you know how can we make it so it it, it really is something that embraces the musical spectrum beyond what is the accepted norms you know that's I guess a way of putting it you know and that's the way we approach things you know for me one of the things that I really appreciate being that I discovered music in the 70s and then the origins of what is now deemed yeah. as hard heavy extreme what have you all these labels to me it's all ridiculous at the end it's all rock and roll it's all yeah. it's all raw but one of the things that I like is the fact that you've been consistent for over 25 years from just the basic premise of the simplicity of making your album covers to keep the interest, mm. the music, and the sincerity, and yet it's not mundane, it's not predictable. It reminds me of just old school rock and roll where you get a record and this is the next chapter and, it's sure. still, and it still satisfies sure the whole experience and the whole sure. bonding of music. I mean, the thing is, is that when, when, when we do an album, and this probably applies to any band, you're, you're in the studio doing the album and you're kind of, you're a little bit panicky because you're like, shit, I hope this is as good as the last one or something like that, you know, and you really, it stresses you out sometimes. And then somehow it clicks into place once it's finished, you know what I mean? And then you kind of go, oh shit, that's what it is. So I guess my point is, you don't always know actually right. how it's going to be you know because albums can albums can change on a you know on a the smallest kind of fragment you know they can become something that you never anticipated you know and that that can be fucking stressful sometimes you know because you know like i say you just in as much as it's not it's not about demographics actually and it's not about increasing your sales base you know you do worry you know are people going to like it you know is it going to be um, is it going to be have the same kind of is it going to radiate in the same way as previous albums did luckily for us it, it, it has you know so do you find that most and I know that I don't want to get into uh, a bashy thing but as music lovers because when I think of Napalm Death I what, first and foremost, you've been labeled with so many fucking titles. For me, one of the things that I picture from the beginnings, the origins of the band till now is your music lovers. We're all music. Yeah, that's that's the thing. You know, I mean, it's so simple. We're yeah, music of course. I mean, let's be honest about this. There are things that all of us like or don't like. Yeah. You know, but but the, I mean, a thing to say beyond that is, you know, sometimes with interviews and stuff, people try and lead you down paths to to really like like trash other bands you know and stuff and like I say sure enough there are things that I really like there are things that I really don't like but I don't think it's constructive for me to sit here and pontificate about things that um, are not my concern basically you know because you know there are people playing in bands that get kind of scoffed at and stuff that probably really would never dream of doing anything that sounds like my band and vice versa you know but that doesn't mean that there is they're somehow of lesser value than my band it's just that they choose to do something different you know right. and i can live with that that's fine that's what's given music the diversity and depth down the ages uh, yeah. you know so you know one of the things that i've always admired and that blows my mind now that i've seen this scene evolve into this whole markability is the fact where artists still enjoy performing it's not like uh, 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 a facade no i noticed that every time i've seen you play regardless even though they tour extensively it seems you still fucking love it yeah the, the, so the, here's the thing the performance aspect of it is important because sometimes people think because we have a certain ethos behind the band and the whole message thing they think we should be really austere and that that should be the ultimate and all encompassing focus but of course if that were the case then you might as well just stand on a soapbox right. on a street corner then it takes the art out of it you know but no of course we're a band yeah. performance is part of doing art you know so i'm damn sure when i go out on that stage it's going to be a performance that hopefully has a lot of substance to you know, it. David, David Bowie said this in an article back in the 80s. 
I perform for myself, and by performing for myself, my audience feels that I'm filling that void. Would you agree with that? Yeah, you absolutely. And, and the thing is, is that if you're not, stay home. Right? You know, that's, that's it, you know. This day and age, man? It's not a tough choice to make in my book, you know. It's hard it's to make a, a buck, you let, know. Let, 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 let's be honest about this. 95% of people out there would love to have done what I've done, what? any other band on this tour has done for years, you know, make no mistake about that, you know, so, you know what, I don't fucking complain about it, you know, sure enough, it's, it's got its, touring in general has its very testing aspects, you know, being in the same fucking metal tube, like for six weeks, you know, with people that, Although they're your friends, they have different habits to you that might not necessarily um, sync with your habits, you know. So to be tolerant and roll through that and be, you know, be uh, temperate and, you know, come through the other end of it and achieve what you need to achieve, that's, is, that's the thing. One of the things that's always been interesting about a band like Napalm Death is the fact that they, as he mentioned themselves, they're doing it because it's them, it's organic. Multi-generational fans have their, are going to be experiencing the performance tonight. The real key here is the fact that you're being genuine, you're being honest, you're being sincere in a day and age where everybody's thinking of the exact opposite. Thank you for taking the time to talk to me. <laughs> Thank you, man. <laughs> We're out. <laughs>